All right, so you've got issues with Hawthorne. You've got concerns about Hawthorne. I reckon you'd have concerns about the Western Bulldogs as well. But before we get to those, uh, let's not take anything away from Essendon. Well, let's not. I mean, uh, this is, once again, a great performance from Essendon, but they go loss, win, loss, win, loss. Like they, so they haven't been able to capture any consistency. But when they play like this, this was a, so you've got to laud them for this performance yeah. against a, a side that is stacked with talent. And that guy the, there was great, Durham, wasn't he? Yeah. So, and, so too was Durham with his two big goals. Huge goal. Yep. Well, the bow and arrow came out. So they kicked 10 out of the last 11 goals in front of 50,000. And they absolutely destroyed the Western Bulldogs late. Jake Stringer, I thought his defensive stuff was enormous. And then we know that he can do that. So you're feeling a lot better if you're an Essendon supporter than you were the week before when they got absolutely <laughs> smashed by Port Adelaide Brownie. They're stacked with talent, the Bulldogs. And I think the, the selection around team and who plays week to week is a little bit of a myth, uh, a mystery for some Bulldogs supporters. So this is what they do when they kick the ball just out of nowhere. They've got three of the best forwards in the competition and they're not going to kick a winning score if you're going like this. So Caleb Daniel was left out of the side. Now this one, how many options do you need? And then you kick it at the ground. He's a very good kick, Cody Waitman. This was just a poor one from him. But that handball's got to go out there and then you get it into a better position. You turn around, you don't, don't know what's going on and you kick it straight back to the Bombers. This happened time and time again. Waitman, I said he was a good kick before, just a lazy <laughs> kick. It does not allow your forwards to give you an opportunity. And this one, you've got to do better than that, Cody Waitman. You're a great kick, you're an elite talent, but you've just bombed it inside forward 50. I know it's a foot race and it's a 50-50, but you've got to be able to do that. That. You kick on your left far too often, Adam Trelaw. You need to get back on your right and be able to do that. So you leave out Caleb Daniel, who's your best kick, and then you leave out Bailey Dale as the sub. I didn't get that. Oh, I thought at the start of the game it was going to be an issue with their foot skills. When you leave the two best out, it didn't, didn't make sense yeah, to me. Yeah, so just on selection, Luke Beveridge tried to explain it post-game. And when I talked to our supporters, I, I talked to them about um, the possibilities and and even though we're evolving and there's some changes within personnel at different times and where the players themselves have created um, an internal sort of pressure for spots, and that's all OK if you, if you end up being a formidable team. Uh, right now we're not. Um, but whether or not there's any pain as we, as we evolve and, and move into the future, because it's all about the now and... And, and what's up next and what's up next year and um, history is history so we need to make sure that we we do what we can um, whether it's the players or, or our support staff just to make sure we capitalise on, on the week to week OK, there was Luke Beveridge, which does bring us to the volcano. I feel like I need a, a translator after listening to that. I just, I just don't understand what was said in that minute or so that we just heard from Luke Beveridge. And it, it has to be better, because if I'm a Western Bulldogs fan, I'm going, what is going on with our side? How does the coach see us? Are, are we in it for the now? Are we in it for the future or are we in it for the past? Because he covered all three things there without addressing any of them. Now, clearly there's a divide between coaching and list management because Bailey Dale's been signed for five years and he's a sub. Caleb Daniels on big money, as you told us on Wednesday, classified demo. Two more years contracted. Long term. Jack McRae signed for long term. Rory Lobb brought into the Rory club Lobb playing VFL. In. So is, is there a disconnect clearly between the coaching and list management? Is there a disconnect between where the board sees the club because they've said top four? Luke Beveridge continually hints that this list isn't good enough to compete but once again you're playing against Essendon who didn't play finals last year who are without Peter Wright their best forward Archie Perkins one of their great young midfielders a number of key position players Reed is out of the side Setterfield's out of the side and you're in that game and you get blown away once again and you're unable to halt momentum so I just thought um, if I'm a Western Bulldogs fan I'm going where, where does the coach see us are we in it for right now or do we need to go through a rebuild? I don't see that as being a fact, but really highly confusing stuff once again um, from Luke Beveridge. Jeez, doesn't he step up with Lordo not here? He well, steps just, up pretty much every week, I, just I reckon, think, anyway, I, CJ. I just, well, think no, it's I just think this week in particular, yeah. you have really you just... You control of the meeting too. I think yeah. it's, I think <laughs> it's, well, yeah. I just think it's important. Well, you were telling stories about quackers. Because anyway, I'm was... looking going, OK, Libba, Bont, uh, we've got Norton, we've got Hugo Hagen, we've got the All-Australian Ruckman, English. We've Stack got with talent. Jones, who's a great interceptor across half-back. And I'm going, Bailey Dale's the sub, but Bramble's getting a game, O'Donnell's getting a game, Baker's getting a game over Bailey Dale, who you've signed for five years on big money. I don't get it. I'm so frustrated with it. 
I can't believe they went with him again last year and at some point this year they're going to have to make a change and refresh this footy club. Now, the other thing to come out of that match which was quite interesting and uh, I, I, no player likes to be dragged so I guess, well, more so you I guess, Nathan. I mean, it doesn't sit well, uh, you know, when you are dragged and it certainly didn't sit well with Dragging Riley right. Sanders. Uh, he was taken from the field. He was actually subbed off and as a result he threw the water bottle. Now, I don't know how that sat with Luke Beveridge but I know how it sat with another former Footscray coach who went on to uh, coaching greatness in Mick Malthouse speaking on the ABC. Look, he can be number 106. It makes no difference where he could be last year's Brownlow medals. You have got to be part of a team and cop what you cop from the coach and and no matter how disappointed you are, walk off and then go to your teammates, pat them on the back and become part of the bench to help your teammates, not be a part of a problem on the bench. Then he might kick his backside that out, his toenails would curl up and he wouldn't play next week. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, I love it. Now, when Mick says, I don't care whether you're the Brownlow medalist the year before, I think Mick might have actually sort of like doing, been doing a bit of time channeling there because <laughs> this was in 1986 when he dragged Brad Hardy and Brad Hardy came to the fence, this is Footscray playing, and uh, ripped his jumper off and waved it in the direction of Mick Malthouse. And Brad Hardy had won the Brownlow the year before and actually won Footscray's best and fairest in that year. That was round 21. So that didn't sit very well with Mick. And uh, <laughs> clearly, clearly, yeah. uh, the resentment lingers. Uh, it's great, great stuff and, and great quote from Mick. And in an ideal world, yes, that, that is mm. how you act as a player. Easier said than done. Like, I was that player. I used to spit the dummy when you got dragged or the coach mm. gives you an earful and you, and you spit it. So Riley Sanders, I actually liked it from him. Because oh, well, I just think... Someone, someone so game, young? No, I, I, I just think that as a young player he'll learn from that but he wants to be great and he's frustrated that it hasn't been working for him and you've got to remember once again Luke Beveridge has pumped him up all pre-season he said he's the most ready first year player oh, I've ever seen Kane, so this high is where you're a walking talking contradiction because you know on one hand you'll have a go at Jack Ginnivan for smiling on another hand you'll have a go at players for sort of laughing at training and yet you've got a bloke coming off the field having been no, subbed out a, and he throws the yeah, water bottle in a, down. In an ideal world, you would act like Mick is asking you to do, but mm. this is the heat of the moment and this is a player who... It's like Nathan Buckley when he first started. That, that was He wants to be great. So I actually I actually didn't mind it from Riley because I know how much it means to him. I know he's frustrated. Yeah. It hasn't quite worked for him. Do you, sorry, Damo. Do you remember when Brendan Favola was dragged by Dennis Pagan at Carlton and, and Feb just sat down and took his boots off? <laughs> that was it. <laughs> he said, I'm done. I'm done for the Should day. Do a TJ's time capsule. Hey, the uh, Bulldogs' problems now stretch to Tom Liberatore's unavailability as a result of this happening late in that game against Essendon. It was off the ball. The game was well and truly decided by this stage, and he just collapsed out of nowhere to the concern of his opponent, Darcy Parrish, who actually does immediately call for some medical attention. Now, it was given to uh, Liberatore post-match, the medical attention by the Bulldogs. There, were, there was no signs of concussion, no symptoms of anything like that, but the AFL has got involved. He's now been placed in concussion protocols and will not play. By the Bulldogs. By the Bulldogs as a result of the AFL inquiring. And obviously, I would imagine with that being the, the image and the look, it would have been hard to clear him to play next week with everything going on in that space.